Hi, everybody. I'm Melinda Emerson, the Small Biz Lady, America's number one small business expert. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's Small Biz Chat Live. Now, we do Small Biz Chat Live once a month because we offer peer-to-peer -peer advice to help you take your small business to the next level. The mission of Small Biz Chat is to end small business failure. So that's what we're about. So I'm really excited that we're gonna have three guests for you tonight. We are broadcasting live from my Small Biz Lady fan page, live on my YouTube channel, and you know we can't forget my Twitter page. We are live on Periscope on Twitter as well. So you have plenty of opportunity to leave a comment. If you like something, retweet it. If you'd like to see another kind of topic, tweet at us, leave us a message on Facebook, hit me up in the messages on YouTube. I want to give you what you need to take your business to the next level. And that's what we're doing here. Now, Small Biz Chat Live, our goal is to give you an opportunity to hear sage advice from experts that are going to help you take your business and your life to the next level. Now, tonight's guest, I have tax expert Eva Rosenberg, you guys know her as Tax Mama. She's here tonight to give us those last minute tips right before our taxes are due. I also have um, brand expert Michelle Washington, and she is going to be talking to us about her Women of More brand and how you can get more out of life. And last but certainly not least, we have online marketing expert Griffin Stewart, and he's going to be talking to us about his company, The Five Day Deal, and just affiliate marketing in general. So we are going to have a lot to talk about tonight, but if you're ready to take your business and your life to the next level, you are in the right place because it's time for Small Biz Chat Live. Now, what I'd like to do is welcome our very first guest. Her name is Eva Rosenberg, but she is known as the Internet's Tax Mama. She has answers to tax questions. She provides information on her tax quips podcast and she's written a wealth of books and released many webinars to help you deal with your personal and business taxes her latest book the fourth edition of small business taxes made easy including the latest tax laws will be in bookstores in march so i'm so excited even to have you back with us on small biz chat live welcome Thank you and congratulations on, you know, being the top woman at LinkedIn this year. That is so exciting. Thank you. Well, it was kind of a surprise. You know, they named me one of the top voices of 2019 for small business and entrepreneurship. I didn't know any of the other people on the list, but I was happy they put me on the list. So I'm really <laughs> excited about that. But now let's get to you because I know taxes stress people out. So I want you to kind of give us some insight into what we need to be thinking about going into filing this year's taxes because you said we actually got some good stuff out of this some of the legislation and things that have come around but first before we get started will you please tell me when are business taxes due this is the number one thing that i think people screw up all the time when are business taxes due oh god yes i'm so glad you asked that first of all they changed all of the deadlines a couple of years ago so partnerships and S corporations and any kind of pass through entities are due on March 15th. And if they are, are going to consider taking an LLC or corporation and make an election to be an S corporation, they have to do that by March 15th. The penalties for not either filing or putting it on extension are $205 per month per partner or oh. per shareholder, so they're huge. So that's why I am so glad that you asked that because somebody just wrote to me and said she finalized her partnership uh, last February and now she's considering filing the tax return and she's facing $4,000 worth of penalties. So the wow. corporate return is due in April as well as the individual on April 15th. Okay. I'm glad you broke that down because I think a lot of people think business taxes are due in April. They are not. They are due for most people in March. March 15th is our deadline. All right. So now talk to me about if you have to file your business taxes, which is a small business owner, you better be filing business taxes. What kind of tax expert do, do they need? I mean, can TurboTax do it for you or do you really <laughs> need a human to do your business taxes? Okay, first of all, I want everybody in business to put your tax returns on extension. 
to absolutely put them on extension this year. It's a form 7004 or come and ask me. Who do you need to help you? Either an enrolled agent or a CPA should be able to help you deal with your taxes. These are people who actually are required to have tax education every single year. They're required to know what the changes are and what's going on. Anybody else, I know, I know you won't believe this, but except for California, Oregon, and Maryland, there are absolutely no education requirements for any tax professionals anywhere else in the country. So anywhere else in the country, if they're not an EA, CPA, or attorney, stay away from them. And I know they're going to hate me for telling you that. <laughs> well, look, I want people to know the information, so I don't care. Um, so, all right, Congress gave us a little gift this past holiday. Can you tell me a little bit about the high points of the new tax law that was just passed in December that kind of updates the, the Trump tax reform law? Sure. There were only about 715 pages. No big deal. <laughs> And they did it at the last minute, so everybody has to retool, so none of the forms, you know, are quite ready yet. But there are two big things that affect us right now as, as taxpayers. Some of them affect everybody and not just businesses, and there are extenders, various tax provisions that expired at the end of 2017, and they may be interesting for people to amend their personal tax returns for last year. Most of those things don't really affect businesses, so I'm not really going to go there. But then the things that do affect business are um, the SECURE Act, and that is changing how retirement plans work. And they're making more and more people eligible, including part-time people. People who are still working can stay, can continue to contribute to IRAs even after age 70 and a half, and people who are 70 and a half don't have to take their minimum required distributions from their IRA accounts. They can wait until age 72. And so there are new provisions for retirement plans themselves that will allow a lot more people to be able to get the benefits, businesses to get tax credits for automating enrollment. So if somebody comes on board, if they automatically make them part of the retirement plan, the business can get a substantial credit. But, you know, there are a lot of nuances and a lot of things that need to be explained. And you mentioned that small business taxes made easy is coming out in a few weeks. I incorporated the details and what to do on all of these changes because we caught it just before it went to the printers. Oh my gosh. That so awesome that you were able to give people that extra insight. So talk to me about, um, I know that I've heard a lot of people talking about the new 20% quali qualified business income deduction. This is a great deal for business owners, right? Or, or will it just generate audits and, and a whole bunch of mess for people? It's really good for tax professionals. We are able to increase our fees dramatically. We are thrilled at this new provision because it's complicated. IRS has written hundreds and hundreds of pages explaining it. It's okay. For some people, it's really good. There is a provision for most of the people that you're dealing with people who are consultants, who are in small businesses and providing a lot of different services, they have severe limitations on how much of this deduction they can use. And uh, if they're married filing jointly, it's somewhere around 315,000. If their income goes above that, they start losing the right to use these deductions. Half of that for singles, and that number has increased by inflation. For people who don't meet what's called a specified service trade or business description, which are service businesses, they don't have these limitations. And, you know, like everything else with the IRS, it's a trade-off. It's 20% of your business profits reduced by certain things. So it's not going to be simple, right? So it's 20% of that. But if you really want to focus on maximizing that deduction, that means you're, you're increasing your business profits, which means you're increasing your self-employment taxes and various other adjusted gross income numbers. For some people, they're better off not using this at all. So I'm actually working on putting together a course on how to 
how to balance this so it makes the most sense. But for some people, it's really great. Now, you already said that um, you think every business owner should put their business on extension. Oh, yeah. Now, what, what's involved in doing that? Because if you owe, you can put it on extension all you want to, but you still have to write a check, right? If you owe. Yes and no. So <laughs> there's always that, right? This is the IRS. So first of all, yes, if you owe, the extension is an extension of time to file, not to pay. If you don't pay, send something with it. But if you can't afford to pay the whole thing, the penalty for late payment is a half a percent per month. If you pull that money out of your credit card, you're going to pay a lot more than that, right? So half a percent a month is not very much. There is also a Form 1127 that you can file that will actually buy you six months of delay without any penalties if it's a hardship. So there actually is a secret form nobody knows about that you can use to get additional time to pay too. All right, thank you for telling us about that because I'm sure that there's a couple of, uh, usually the people that I see most getting jammed up with this is people who are side hustlers and gig workers like they kind of forget to put that 30% aside and then they get hit with a tax bill and they're like, you know, they're like um, Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone, you know, when they get this bill, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I think it's really important that you talked about that. But um, are there any special tax benefits for people who are gig workers and, and, and freelance folks out here? Well, honestly, the IRS has this whole gig worker area of the website that they've expanded on. But the fact is, all they are is people who are self-employed. And the the shock comes exactly the way you said. Somebody I, on the on Tax Mama, I have this Ask Tax Mama forum where people can ask questions for free. We answer them for free, and we'll be very patient up to a point when we keep giving them the same answer five times, and you know they're not getting it. Like the guy who said, "How come I?" My profit was, my taxable income was twenty nine thousand. Why am I paying ten thousand dollars to the IRS? on $29,000, that's a lot. Well, we explained to him his business profit, his Schedule C was about 40,000 and he's paying 15.3% self-employment taxes on that. The income tax is only on the 29,000, but that's the extra five or 6,000 is on his self-employment and he can't get the concept and he's <laughs> not unique. A lot of business people don't understand that even if they're their itemized deductions or their standard deductions wipe out their business profit. They still have self-employment taxes. And that becomes a huge shock when they do their taxes at April 15th and now don't have the money to pay. So that's why if you're in business, it is your responsibility to sit down with a good tax professional, invest a couple of hundred dollars. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to sell that. I'm just telling you that it will save you thousands of dollars if you sit down with somebody for about two hours and get an understanding of what you need to do because they can help you find tax credits and save a whole bunch of money with the right deductions and you will owe so much less and no penalties. I never see any reason why people should have to pay penalties. It's bad enough you've got to pay taxes. Why pay penalties? <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Well, listen, we're going to go to break right now, but when we come back, we're going to talk to the tax mama about some of the most common things that people miss that they could be deducting on their business taxes. I'm Melinda Emerson, the small biz lady. You're watching Small Biz Chat Live and we will be right back. Hi, I'm Melinda Emerson, small biz lady. I know you might be thinking about quitting your business and going back into corporate America, but wait, before you give up, my new book, Fix Your Business, could give you a whole new lease on life. My 12 P's of running a successful business will walk you through step by step how to grow your business revenue, how to hire great people and streamline your processes and so much more. Grab a copy today of Fix Your Business and get your life back.
Welcome back to Small Biz Chat Live. I'm Melinda Emerson, your host, and I am so excited to be here today with the tax mama, and we're asking her the questions that can help you with your last-minute tax filing stuff. All right, tell me, what are the most common missed business tax expenses that you see constantly? People who spend money using cash, they don't keep track of it, and they don't even dare to estimate correctly. When I force somebody to actually track the cash they spent, it was closer to $10,000. So track your out-of-pocket cash expenses. The other stuff you have on credit cards and checks, and we can go through that. Your accountant can go through that and see what's deductible. So those are the main things. And then there might be other things related to the mileage. Your mileage is a lot more than you realize it is. If you actually track it, you're going to find some really good stuff. And then there's something called per diem costs, which may apply to you where you're not even spending money or spending very little money, but the IRS gives you allowances for deductions you can use instead of the actual cash you spent. I took one person who spent 500 a month, and because of the per diems, I turned it into almost 5,000 a month. Wow. Okay. Well, those are big ones. But here's some of the questions that I often get asked. You know, can you write off meals if you take anyone to dinner and you talk about business? Can you, can you deduct it? We go out to dinner with your best friend and say, we say the word business, it's a business deduction. No, you can't. <laughs> it really has to be business. It has to be associated. We can't deduct entertainment at all anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing any kind of an entertainment thing, one of the things you want to do is get a separate bill for the meals and, and drinks part of it. You know, like you buy the, uh, you buy the, uh, what do you call it? The box seats at sporting events and they cost thousands of dollars. That's not deductible, but the meals you provide, get a set, an absolute separate receipt. Those are still going to be deductible. All right. Now, what about this? Can I get my business to pay for my health insurance? Most of the time you can, if you're a partnership or a corporation, if you're self-employed, you can't get the business to do it, but you can take an adjustment to income for the cost of the health insurance. And if you are a family and you get your spouse or your children to work for you, you can give them family coverage as part of their wages. They have to work for you legitimately. And all of the family medical expenses, not just the insurance, could get covered if you know how to do it. That's one of the chapters in the book. All right. And how now, to do what that. About, what about gifts to clients? Is there a limit or is it just, a, you know, a bottle of wine or can I just send them a pen or a t-shirt with my logo on it? Or can I, can I send them a $300 wine basket? Yeah, right. Maybe you can send them the wrapping for the basket. <laughs> what we have is a $25 limit per gift, per person, per year. It hasn't changed in the last 50 years. And so you can't give them more than that. You can maybe add the cost of the gift wrapping and shipping, but that's it. Mm. So we have to make an adjustment on our books. I mean, Congress hasn't changed this forever and there's barely anything you can get for 25 bucks. That so would be instead nice what we do, our, yeah. our promote we can do promotion things we can't give them tickets to something or take or give them a gift certificate to go to dinner but we can take them to dinner okay well that might be better anyway work on the relationship all right tax mama thank you so much for being with us hang in there we're going to bring you back at the end of our show for our hit or quit it round but thank you so much for giving us such valuable information now stay tuned we when we come back we're going to be talking with michelle washington and she's going to be talking to us about how to live your best life i can't wait to hear all about it you're watching small biz chat live i'm melinda emerson stay with us My new book, Fix Your Business, is really about encouraging people to take back control of their business and change how their businesses is run. It's not okay to skip paychecks. It's not okay to never feel like you can take a vacation. And it's also not okay to not know how much profit you've made in your business until your taxes are done. I really want business owners to stop letting their businesses be runaway trains. I've written this book to teach people processes and systems to help them run their businesses intentionally. My goal is to help existing entrepreneurs 
entrepreneurs create a business that allows them to live their dream life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Small Biz Chat Live. If you are watching us, hopefully you're joining my Small Biz Lady Facebook fan page, or maybe you're over on YouTube hanging out with us on my YouTube page, or you are live on Twitter hanging out with us. Please give us a shout. Give us a retweet. Tell people that we are here ending small business failure and giving helpful business advice. Now it is time to turn to my next guest, Miss Michelle Washington, and she is a passionate, innovative servant leader and founder of the Women of More LLC brand. It started as a digital magazine in 2016, and now it is a digital media company. She does events. She's got her magazine, marketing outreach, workshops, video production, online community development. She is all about helping women live a life of more. So I am so excited to have her with us. You know, Harper's Bazaar said that her magazine was one of the rising feminist magazines to read. And she is really on her mission to help women live a life of more as their legacy. Michelle, welcome to Small Biz Chat Live. Well, thank you so much, Melinda. I am super duper excited to be on your show. It's just amazing. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm so glad to have you. So talk to us. How did you go about creating this brand, Women of More? Well, Melinda, it came from um, a personal experience, um, a rough, rough season in my life where I forgot who I was. And one of the things I had to remind myself where I was reminded of that I was more than those trials and errors and all those other things. And because I needed that reminder, I knew there were women around the world that needed the reminder as well, that they are more than those tragedies. They are more than the titles and labels that society placed on us. So that's where it came from. Okay, so there's lots of women out here working on somebody else's agenda, you yeah. know, and uh, why, why is that? How does that happen to us? Melinda, and I, and I really want to know if I'm on track with this, because I really think it happens when we're little girls. I think we're taught to help everybody else. We're taught as little girls to change the pamper, to do the dollhouse, to wash the dishes, to cook, and all those things are great. They are great, but it seems like we continue to invest in that rhythm or a narrative with us as women. So when we get um, become adults, we continue the same cycle. Because when we was little, when we were little girls, we got the baby dolls, we got the um, easy bake oven, and we got all those different things. But nobody brought in the other portion of who we were or who we were going to become. And that's the thing. And I think that's where it starts. I, you know, I think that's really, really important because I do think we're, we're trained to be mothers and wives, like, 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 they, like from, from little girls, we get baby dolls for, you know, gifts and stuff. So, um, but, you know, there's a lot of women's empowerment movements out here. Like, I, I feel like every time I turn around, there's some other women's group, right? So wh why is this so needed? And, you know, are people just trying to take advantage of people's pain or is it this really something that's helping lift everyone up? I, I would say both. And you and I know that, you know, when someone sees somebody else doing something that they want to do it too, because they just want to do it. But I think it's a need in regards to reminding, reminding women around the world who they are. And that's where it starts. So if people are doing these groups and empowerment, the conference, the workshops and all that. If you're not reminding us who we are, then, you know, it's just another conference or workshop. 
Right, right. So, so let's talk about the Women More brand. Like how, how have you staked out a place in the market? Um, you know, I love your publication. I've been a fan since you started. Um, but, you know, how have you been able to make your brand different in the marketplace from all these other women empowerment events, conferences, brands, that are, you know, all this stuff out here? This is going to surprise you. It's probably going to surprise the people that are watching this right now. The way that I became um, an original is staying relevant, not overthinking it, just providing content, providing information and inspiration that we absolutely need. That's it. That's all with a little flair. All right. Well, yeah, <laughs> we can definitely bring your own flair now. But listen, you know, 88% of all women owned businesses in the country today do not gross over 100000 in revenue. And I mean, what do you think is the thing, the biggest thing that's plaguing women business owners right now? I think what it is, is that we all, not all, but those percentages, we want to be in business, but we have a mindset of a hobby or someone that just want to do this because, you know, it seems good, it looks good, um, but we don't make that shift to make it a business model. It's more of, we just want to help people. So there's a difference. And I had, Melinda, to be honest with you, when I first got started, I just wanted to help people. I still want to help people now, but I didn't market myself as a business. I'm in the business of women of more. And that is the, the I think, is one of those missing gaps when it comes to those women that we're not making that amount of money. We won't even think, I don't believe some women think it's possible to make that amount of money. Um, and I think we need to just be educated. And I think one of the best women that can educate us is Americans. Number one, small <laughs> business woman. <laughs> you're, you're too kind. You're too kind. I mean, I, I really do try to help people live their best life as an entrepreneur, but I believe that a dream is nothing but a plan with a timeline, right? It's like, it's like you can dream, but let's, let's dream with a plan, right? Let's not leap and then look, let's have a plan so that it's not scary. I think people feel fear in business because they don't have a plan yeah. and that, and that, because if you have a plan, you can work your plan. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can understand what it's going to take. But um, I know that one of the things that we talk about a lot is, you know, people struggle with low self-esteem and, and depression and generally, you know, worry about other people's opinions of them all the time. Like, how can you as a as a woman, how do you advise people to get over past regrets in life? Mm -hmm. um, the, the main thing is to realize that your past regrets are in your past. You know, Melinda, I teach a class throughout the week to men and women that are incarcerated. And the one thing that keeps them struggling is because they allow what they went through or they're choosing to become their present. And I have to remind them that regret, guilt, shame is something that has already happened. It happened already. But sometimes the side effects with guilt and shame is to make you think that it is happening. So if you think it's happening, it will suffocate you, it will paralyze you from moving forward. So those regrets sometimes, it will portray as if it's occurring. Then if we think it's occurring, then we won't move past it. So the mm -hmm. main thing we need to do is place those things in its right place, which is in our past, so we can move forward into the things that we absolutely want to do. I love it. I love it. All right. So tell me this before we go to break. How can I have a life of more? What is your advice? The, my advice to a life of more, know what you want. Know who you are. If you don't figure that out, because when you know who you are, you're going to go full steam ahead. That's number one. Self-awareness is, is key as well. And by all means, without even considering it, just go for it. Don't think about people um, thinking that you're some something that you're not or judging and all that other kind of stuff. Just go for it. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 All right, guys. When we come back on Small Biz Chat Live, we're going to be talking more with Michelle and we're going to be talking about how you can get live a life of more. I'm Melinda Emerson, the Small Biz Lady. You're watching Small Biz Chat Live and we will be right back. 
Are you tired of struggling in your business, not taking a paycheck, dreading dealing with your business in the morning? Are you regretting even starting your business in the first place? Well, I know you're tired, and I also remember what that kind of tired is like. But the good news is, it's time to stop feeling that way. Stop! I'm Melinda Emerson, Small Biz Lady, and my new book, Fix Your Business, is a 90-day turnaround plan to get back your life and reduce chaos in your business. I've been in business nearly 20 years, and let me teach you how to build a business that works for you. Grab a copy today. Welcome back to Small Biz Chat Live. We're talking with Michelle Washington, the founder of the Woman of More LLC. She is a media company doing a women's empowerment events. And I'm so excited to have her with us tonight. All right, Michelle, tell me this. How does your level of commitment have a role in you living a life of more? Man, you know, the older I have become, um, I realized that my word is everything. Now I knew that before, but I misplaced it. What I know for sure is my word have to mean everything to me first. There's two words that I live by, Melinda, is promise keeper. I have to be a promise keeper to myself first. Mm. First, me. I gotta keep my promises to me first. Because Melinda, I still don't understand. Why do I need an accountability partner when it comes to going to the gym, or eating better. I know some people need it, but Melinda, I don't ask you to wake me up to go to work. I don't ask you to help me with my projects or my timeline because it's, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. So I had to know that I had to be 100% committed to myself first, which enables me to keep my commitment to women of more and whoever else I'm um, partnering up with. I love it. I love it. So how do you stay so positive? Because I know even the pictures that I see that you post on Facebook, you look like you have just put your finger in a socket. Like it's like, hey, hey, you know what I mean? And you always give me that every picture I've ever seen you in. You are like on a thousand. How do you how do you maintain that? Well, Melinda, I wake up like this. Good night. Woo! But, you know, I think I'm just happy. I'm really happy. And of course, you know, I, I'm a believer. Um, God is first in my life. So because of that, I understand my purpose and my assignment. Um, and then the other things, you know, I go to the gym. I listen to certain music that's going to inspire me. And I allow people um, to sow into me from YouTube University. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? So. You know, that's those things that keep me moving. I love it. I love it. All right. So what's the best advice you've been given yet about your business? The best advice is to be patient, but be persistent. Be patient, but be persistent in everything that you do and understand who you are. That's the main thing. Know who you are. You know, when I first got started, Melinda, I was just trying to navigate this thing this new awareness of business and women of more. And I allowed too many opinions to, you know, move me in different directions I wasn't supposed to. So it's very important for you to know before you start who you are, what you want to do and move forward in that direction. All right. I agree with that 100%. All right. So tell me what's next for the women of more brand. What are you doing? Where are you going? Well, two things. Besides Melinda um, Emerson being on, on the cover of 2020 and Women of War magazine, woo! That's, that's going to be amazing, Melinda, because your pictures are everything. That's one. And then number two, here in Delaware, there's a TV station called DETV. Um, it's on Comcast 28. Comcast 28 here in Delaware. So I agreed with the owner to create original content that will be broadcast on our TV show. And you know, Melinda, you know, we got to talk about it because I would love for you to come here to Delaware, get you in a TV station and um, see how we can navigate um, your wealth of knowledge and wisdom in regards to not just business. I know you're America's number one this small business woman, but you provide so much more than that because you are a woman of more. 
Well, thank you so much. And we'll definitely talk about that. But listen, I am so excited that you're here with us tonight and that you shared these empowering words because on Small Biz Chat Live, we're, we definitely want to help people run better businesses, but we want to help people live their dream life. And that's why guests like you are important to come on. And I'm so excited and happy that you were able to join me tonight. So stay with us though, because we're going to go to another commercial and we're going to bring you back at the end of the show for our round robin panel. So don't go anywhere, but this is Melinda Emerson and you're watching Small Biz Chat Live and we will be right back. Are you tired of struggling in your business, not taking a paycheck? Dreading dealing with your business in the morning? Are you regretting even starting your business in the first place? Well, I know you're tired, and I also remember what that kind of tired is like. But the good news is, it's time to stop feeling that way. Stop! I'm Melinda Emerson, small biz lady, and my new book, Fix Your Business, is a 90-day turnaround plan to get back your life and reduce chaos in your business. I've been in business nearly 20 years, and let me teach you how to build a business that works for you. Grab a copy today. Welcome back to Small Biz Chat Live. I am here. I am so excited to have you guys with us tonight. We, my next guest is going to talk to you about how to make money in your sleep. That's right. We're going to be talking about affiliate marketing, online marketing success strategies. I'm so excited to have um, my guest here with us, Mr. Griffin Stewart. He's an affiliate marketer. He founded the five day deal.com with his wife, Valerie in 2014, they specialize in joint venture partnerships on a massive scale. And they always donate 10% of their profits to charity. And to date they have donated more than 1.8 million dollars in the last five years to charity. So that's what I call putting their money where their mouth is. So Griffin, thank you so much for joining me tonight on small biz chat live. Thanks so much for having me, Melinda. I appreciate it. All right, so so let's let's take a step back because I'm going to let you talk about five day deal in a minute. But tell me, let's talk about what exactly is affiliate marketing and who partakes in it. Like, how does it work? Ah, great question. Uh, so affiliate marketing is basically people that are sharing uh, product and they're sharing it through a special trackable link, and then they get a commission um, when that product sells. And um, the way it works is, is typically there's a dashboard where they can get their special links that they share. And then when you go there, um, your browser kind of keeps track of that. And if you purchase the product, then they get paid based on that. Got it. Got it. All right. So how do be people typically promote their affiliate link? Like they, okay, so I sign up for your program. I get my link. Um, what are some of the best ways to share affiliate links if that's the kind of business that I want to build? Uh, the number one way is through an email list. So, um, you know, if you have a website or a small business and you don't have an email list, I'd highly recommend getting one of those. Um, that's the most effective. People also share on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, that kind of thing. Um, but those are more kind of people go there when they want to, to get information or to see things. Uh, whereas an email list is more of an active you know, you can send that to them wherever they are um, sort of thing. And our, our sales are only five days. So that's the most effective marketing for, for our business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So how, how do the payments work? Like, do you actually make money as affiliate marketer? Because I know lots of people that, that have signed up for affiliates and they make goose eggs. So I, I kind of want to understand, you know, like, if I sign up for an affiliate, do I get paid like every time there's a sale? Do I get paid once a month, quarterly? Like how, how does all that work? Yeah, great question. Uh, so most affiliate programs th that we join, uh, they pay out monthly. Some of them pay quarterly. Um, and then as far as making money, it really depends on your platform and the products that you're promoting. Um, one of the things I always tell our affiliates and our partners is, you know, don't promote this product unless you've found value in it and you think that the people that are, you know, on your list and following you will get value from that. Um, I've, I've tried a few different things where when I was first getting into this, where, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not known as a small business expert or anything like that. And I tried to share, share some affiliate links with my friends 
Um, and I did value the products, but I'm not an authority on that um, in that sense. And so nobody purchased and, you know, I was checking the, the dashboard and refreshing and no money was coming in. Um, but yeah, we have partners that'll make six figures in five days, but it just really depends on your audience and making sure that it's a good offer for them. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about the five day deal.com. That is your business that you run for the last five or so years. And tell, mm -hmm. tell me about how, how your program works and the kinds of different things that, that you um, promote on your platform. Sure. Um, so five day deal.com, we sell educational bundles uh, for videographers, photographers, and small business owners. Uh, we have three sales a year in those genres and they're for five days each only. Um, and what we do is put together around one to $2,000 worth of digital products and we sell them for five days at an incredible discount, usually less than $100 um, to get all those tools and resources. And then we donate 10% of that to charity. Um, so it's, uh, it's a really fun sale. Um, we're blessed to be able to partner with many of the best um, educators in their niches in the world. And it's, it's a lot of fun for, for us as a company um, with our partners and then our customers also love it. Very cool. Very cool. So um, how often have you, you said you do three sales a year. So do you do one small business focused sale a year? Uh, yeah. So we typically do anywhere from two to three a year this year, um, March 5th through the 10th, we're going to have a small business focus sale. And um, we're really excited about that. We've got some great partners on board and uh, great affiliates and it's going to be, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. So. Really cool. So, so, how did you start your company? Like, how do, how do you just wake up one day and say, oh, I know what it is, five-day deal? I mean, like, how did you, where did the idea come from? How did it kind of morph into the, what it is now? Uh, yeah, great question. So my wife and I, we used to travel, um, and I was, there. Were, I'd seen a few travel bundles, sales, but I didn't know how the, you know, how the accounting worked and how the business side of it worked. But I knew for me as a customer, was like this is the best thing ever you know you get so much value and even if you only like one or two of the products then it's typically worth the purchase price um so i um freelance and was in charge of an ebook store for one of the largest photographers in the world named trey ratcliffe and i met a lot of the authors and a lot of great photographers and one of them wanted to put together a bundle sale and they came to me to ask me how much i would charge to do the graphics and the website and um the checkout for it. And so I said, Hey, I don't, you know, this is going to cost a lot of money. I don't want you to owe me more than you're going to make or not make a profit on it. So why don't we partner together and um, I'll do the website and you can do the business stuff that I'm terrible at paperwork and all that. And um, so we did that and we had a goal of, um, you know, maybe donating 30 to $40,000 a year to charity. And um, our first sale back in January, 2014, we were able to donate more than uh, 45,000 to charity. And that year we had one more photography bundle and donated more than 250,000, um, from those two sales. So it was just amazing to see and really exciting. Wow. Okay. So that's, so that, that's really interesting. So it's always been your model from the very beginning to donate money to charity. Yeah, sure has. We wanted a business that not only made ourselves money, but if it did well, that it would, it would make, um, money that we can give back. Um, we're, we're Christians as well. And so part of our personal finances is tithing and we wanted that in our business as well. Good stuff. I, I'm also a Christian that tithes, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so that's good stuff. Um, so tell me, how do you recruit affiliates that you want to partner with? Like, how do you kind of figure out what products and things that you want? Yeah, great question. Um, so we're always kind of year round, um, a lot of the affiliates that we partner with, I'm friends with. So I get targeted a lot for ads for, you know, video, photo and small business. Um, and so I'm always, we're always looking for people with great products that also have a great social reach. Um, typically the, the newsletter number is what we're looking for the most because of our, our short sales windows. Um, and so we'll reach out to them and kind of let them know like about our partnership. And um, we try to make it 
a win-win. We try to be as generous as we can with our partners as far as commission goes. Um, and so we've had partners on board since 2014 that partner with us year after year because it's such a, a great win-win experience. And what's your target newsletter that you really kind of like people to have on their list in terms of their email list? Um, we're looking for 10,000 or more. Okay. Um, so, And it's been interesting. We've seen people that have a list of 20,000 that will outsell somebody with 100,000, just depending on all about engagement. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you leverage um, your, you know, you, I guess you kind of explained how you recruit people, but is, is that your whole model is joint ventures, right? You guys don't have any products that, that you sell, do you? Correct. Yeah. Currently um, our whole model is we get all the different partners and products together and, and sell those. So that's our, that's our whole business. And, and that way we're able to focus a hundred percent. This is our, um, me and my wife full-time job and we have another uh, full-time contractor and we focus our whole year on making sure these sales are a success for partners. Got it. Got it. All right. So talk to me about some of the do's and don'ts of affiliate marketing. Cause it seems like I see a whole lot of people doing affiliate marketing. I don't know if a whole lot of people are making real money doing it though. So talk to me about like your top two or three do's and don'ts of this. Sure. Um, I think the most important thing about affiliate marketing is just to, you know, make sure that you, you as a person that you, you found value in the product, you love the product um, and do that before anything else. So, I mean, there's a lot of products out there. There's some that pay, you know, 50% commission or maybe even more than that. Um, but if, if you're promoting something that isn't, you don't see a real value in, or you don't think will provide a real value to others. Um, to me, I think people can see right through that. And um, so, you know, just make sure you're promoting quality products. And um, like, like Michelle said, you know, it's very important that you're true to yourself and what you're doing. Um, so, you know, they, you might be able to make money for a little while promoting something that's not really your great product, but eventually that's going to catch up with you. And, uh, uh, you're probably not going to feel good about that and you know, your, the, your business would dry up. So, so um, what about some of the don'ts, right? So you said don't promote a product you don't believe in. Okay. What else? Um, let's see what else. Um, so yeah, if you don't believe in the product, don't promote it. Um, the other thing too, I think is important is just getting to know the, the owner of the product or, using the product yourself um, so that you can give genuine, you know, feedback to the owner if there's something that could be improved on and also share with anybody that's considering the product, like, Hey, here's the pros of the product, but there are some cons, no products. Perfect. Here's what I didn't like. Um, and that helps let people know that not only that you've tested out the product, but that you're not just saying, Hey, this is the best product in the world, you know? Okay. And lastly, what is the most common way to approach people selling through affiliates? Like I know for me, because I'm the small business lady, I probably get pitched twice a week. Somebody, like, would you like to be our affiliate? And I've never heard of them. <laughs> I don't know anything about their company. Um, but what is the best way to approach somebody to sell your stuff through affiliates? Like if, if, if you have a product that you want to offer to me, what's, what's the best way? Um, if you have a product to offer. So there's two different kind of uh, ways people go with affiliate systems. One is you basically accept everybody with a face and a blog, um, and then you can kind of see what happens. Uh, what we do at Five Day Deal is we are really selective in who we partner with, and most of our partners are the same way. They're very selective on what they'll affili affiliate promote. Um, so it's really like from our experience, it's just finding a great, fit where it's like, Hey, you know, you've got a, a platform in this, you've got a great product maybe, or maybe you don't have a great product, but you've got a great uh, following that's interested in say landscape photography or small business. And so uh, we'll reach out and let them know about our business. And um, if it's a great fit, then we partner together that way. So. All right. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much, Griffin. You have really been invaluable insight. And what I'm going to do now is bring our other colleagues back in and we're going to do what we call our hit it 
or quit it panel. And let me tell you how this works. So each of you will be asked the same question and you can you can have only 30 seconds to answer and you can't repeat someone else's answer. So if someone takes your book, you gotta come up with a new book, right? So that's how it works. So I'm gonna invite back um, Eva Rosenberg, Tax Mama, and um, Michelle Washington to come back in, and we're going to dive into our panel here. So our first question, and here's the thing, you can't go over 30 seconds. If you do, you're going to hear a loud noise interrupting you. So I don't want to do that to you. So hit it or quit it. Keep it tight. Okay. Now, our first question that I'm going to ask you, um, and I'm going to start with you, Eva. So since you've been waiting the longest, what is your favorite podcast? Favorite, podcast. favorite podcast? Oh, um, I honestly don't watch a lot of podcasts, so I don't really have one. Oh, wow. Okay. Except maybe yours, because I do try to get in on yours. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you for saying that the Small Bichette podcast, we've been doing it now for about six months and it's really going well. So I'm glad to hear that you listen to mine, but you need to listen to more podcasts. There's some really good stuff out there. <laughs> All right, Michelle, what is your favorite podcast? It's called Tuesday Morning Coffee and the guy, his name is Babin and he is a, an amazing creator, content creator. And um, I just love the information that he provides in regards to, you know, being creative. He interviews different um, creators, but it's called Tuesday Morning Coffee. Tuesday Morning Coffee. Love it. Love it. All right, Griffin, what is your favorite podcast? Um, so I don't li listen to podcasts too much. Um, most I'm more into audiobooks, but I like Tim Ferriss's podcast. He usually has um, really interesting people and kind of really interesting perspectives on there. Yeah, Tim Ferriss is an interesting cat. <laughs> he, he lucked up with a very good book title. <laughs> he did. And he's been riding that wave ever since. I'm not mad at him. All right, <laughs> uh, good stuff. Okay, now the next question, Michelle, you're gonna be first, then you Griffin, then you Eva. So my next question is, what is your favorite business app? What is your favorite business app? So, so um, social media is not a business app, correct? No, you can say Facebook or Instagram if you want to. I mean, it's an app on your phone. Absolutely. My favorite business app this week over the last month is TikTok. Really? Tell me why. Um, you learn so much. You get more views. I think I have two followers and I get more views on TikTok with two followers than I do on Instagram. Interesting, interesting. All right, Griffin, what is your favorite business app? Uh, probably Slack. It keeps keeps things out of my email as much as possible. All right, Slack is a good one. A lot of that one's really popular. A lot of people say that one. <laughs> All right, Eva, what is your favorite business app? Well, you know, my favorite website, rather than a business app, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, is the IRS. <laughs> I live on the IRS website. Of course so, you do. Course yes, you I do. do. I live on it, and I correct it, and I send the corrections in, and they fix it for me. All right. Well, they love you. You're helping they them do. do their job better. <laughs> And, and of course, as, as an enrolled agent with the IRS would tell me the IRS website is their favorite business app. I'm going to take that because I, I think it's valid. M one of my favorite apps, um, I'm a big fan of Dropbox, and I've become a big fan of this new app called Design RR. And it's like enables you to make ebooks and import mm -hmm. video, and they'll turn it into content in seconds. I mean, it's amazing. Um, and it's a new app I've been playing with and I, I really like it. So it's called Design RR. And you're going to give us a link to that because that sounds good. Yeah, well, I'm it's actually going to put out a post soon with it with all of my favorite new tech tools in it. So just watch out for that soon. Another couple of weeks it'll come out. Um, but yeah, that's that's my new favorite one. All right. So um, Griffin, I'm going to ask you first this question. What is your favorite old school marketing tip? Uh, old school marketing tip. Um, I think, yeah, just, you know, making sure that you're, um, 
I don't know. I, I think your motivation in business should be about helping people and um, not about money, first of all. And if it is about money, then, it, you know, your business is probably going to fail or you're going to burn out at some point because if you don't love what you do and you don't help people with it, then it's not worth it. I hear that. I hear that. Michelle, what is your favorite old school marketing tip? Um, built relationships. Don't be so technical and, um, you know, I know we use a lot of te technology, but relationship, be a hands-on is most important. I like it. I like it. Eva, what's your favorite old school marketing tip? Understanding the what's in it for me concept. What does the customer really want? Don't sell them. Give them something that they really want that they can really use, even if they don't know they need it. Right, right. But what's in it for me? Everybody listens to the same radio station, right? W-I-I-F-L. <laughs> <laughs> what's in it for me? I love it. I love it. Good stuff. My favorite old school marketing tip, handwritten notes. Handwritten notes still make a big difference. Everybody send an email. If you send somebody a handwritten note on personal stationery, they will keep it and they will remember you. All right. Last question. What is your favorite business book? Favorite business book you've ever read? I'm going to start with you, Eva. What's your favorite business book? It is Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz from way back in about 1960 or 70. And it's all about visualization, positivity, believing in whatever it is you want. And it's the foundation for a lot of business philosophies, Amway and everything else, basically tapped into that. So if you can visualize it, manifest it and believe it, it actually works. It actually works. When I decided I didn't want to do taxes anymore and I wanted to write, my phone rang and McGraw Hill called and offered me a book. There you go. <laughs> I believe in that too. And I actually kind of got my first book deal in a very similar way. So I, I believe in that. All right, Michelle, what is your favorite business book you've ever read? Developing the Leader in You, uh, Within You, and it's by John Maxwell. Mm. Anything John Maxwell is good. Yeah, John Maxwell is, is the man. He's a master for sure. So that, that's a great book. All right, Griffin, what's your favorite business book? Um, I, re I just read this one recently. It's called Disrupt You by Jay Samet. And um, it's really cool. He, he's got a perspective of basically like, you know, you can just change your whole career or come up with a new idea um, just by kind of looking at the market and figuring things out. So this guy's really interesting and he's been both an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur, which he says is when you're in a massive corporation and you're trying to innovate inside that as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And my favorite business book is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber because, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it, to me, that book, when I read it back in the day, it changed my life and it changed my business. So I always have to give Michael Gerber a shout out for that. All right. Listen, guys, thank you so very much for being my guest tonight on Small Biz Chat Live. Eva Rosenberg, the tax mama. We're so excited for the fourth edition of your Small Business Taxes Made Easy book to come out. Michelle Washington, the creator of the Women of More brand and Griffin Stewart, the five day deal. We're really excited. We're going to be shouting out your five day deal from March 5th to March 10th. So we're excited about that. And thank you all for joining me. If you want more information about tonight's guest, head on over to my blog, succeedasyourownboss.com. And if you want more information just about me, I'm the small biz lady. You can find me everywhere on the internet as a small biz lady. So I want to leave you with this. You never lose in business. Either you win or you learn. God bless everybody. See you next time.